All right, so the aim of risk identification is to identify the possible risks that may affect either negatively or positively. Okay. All right, the objective of the business and the activity under the analysis. All right, and these are the risk identification actually can be made by evaluating uh, the following question. Actually, the first one is what can happen, how it can happen, and how, uh, why could it happen? Okay, and uh, <laughs> to answer this question, okay, the, uh, well, for example, what can happen eh, if we look at the question where this question actually uh, encourage you to think broadly about the potential uh, or event or outcomes that may exist later, right? So it's actually uh, help you to identify the risk, whether it is positive or negative. Eh? Positive means that it is a threat to the business and positive may be it is an opportunity for the business. And it is uh, actually a way of uh, stimulating the creative uh, ideas right uh, creating uh, creating the creative ideas and you can think uh, critically uh, about the potential event or outcome so uh, let's say you have identified a range of possibility uh, during your discussion so you can now better prepare for the different scenarios uh, and be more resilient in the face of the uncertainty, for example. Okay, and this approach actually, uh, it is a broad perspective to help us to make more informed decision and to take advantage of these unexpected opportunities. Right. Uh, when it comes to this, uh, how can it happen? Uh, maybe, uh, actually, this is where you try to dig deeper into the specific causes or the factors that could trigger the event or the outcome identified in the first question. So here you can gain a better understanding of the mechanism behind the perceived risk. And this question again to help you to identify and evaluate the root causes of a problem or risk. So which uh, I think this will enable individuals or the team, the risk team to develop more effective strategies. And to answer this, uh, why this um, could happen, right? Uh, and this question actually aim you to identify the root causes. This, this, sorry, um, not to happen. Why? Why could it happen? Sorry, the third one. Okay, why could it happen? Is actually aim to identify the root causes, root causes and underlying condition that might have contributed to the occurrence. So why could it happen actually in the second one, uh, how can it happen is the factors that lead to the uh, risk and here now the root causes, the main, uh, the triggers to the risk actually. Okay, so once you have or you have identified that, so you can understand it better and you will take the proactive measures to prevent similar even event from happening uh, in the future, right? Okay, we look at the two ways of uh, identifying the risk. Okay, we have two ways here. One is retrospective, <coughs> and the second one is a prospective. All right, what is retrospective risk? That are those that have already occurred in the past. All right, it's happened already. And they are often uh, the most common and easiest way to identify risk. This is actually easier to believe that a risk can happen again. All right, uh, it will happen again right you know that it's going to happen again all right so so when you look at the past incident or accident we uh, actually can learn from them and uh, maybe we can take a step to prevent them from happening again precaution all right so it is easier to quantify the impact of retrospective risk because we can see the actual damage that this has caused it has caused okay uh, so this allow us actually to assess the severity of the risk and take appropriate measures. 
right? And uh, the sources actually, if you look at the sources, how we can um, get the information, it is from the, uh, you can see the hazard or incident log or register, all right? So where this is actually uh, the, the past document, the record of the last incident or accidents and the causes will be there and you can look at the causes of the accident for example and the audit reports are another valuable sources of information all right as they provide an overview of the organization processes and system all right and uh, customer complaints are also useful information they can provide the in insight of the companies and the, the customer service okay they can highlight the area for improvement when the customer complain you always look into it eh? all right and you try to satisfy your customers in order to to keep them uh stay loyal to your company and the <coughs> accreditation document and report can be provide valuable information can provide eh? can provide valuable information about the organization compliance its uh, regulatory requirement industry standard <clears throat> okay you also may look at the asta for client survey minutes of meeting uh, with bod eh, and can also provide information that uh, sources of uh, uh, document can be used for you to to study about the past result or the past retrospective risk, okay. Uh, <coughs> okay, another one is the prospective. What is uh, prospective risk? Okay, here where you need to remember that the prospective risk uh, actually may be difficult or harder for you to identify compared to the existing risk. Okay, uh, this is because these uh, prospective risks are those that have not occurred yet. Eh? It's not happened yet, but may happen, maybe, okay, in the future. All right. It is um, difficult to identify and to record all the significant risks. Eh? Uh, so regardless of whether they are critical or not, so whether you can manage it or not, so it is quite difficult for you to, to control it. This allow for a comprehensive understanding actually eh, of potential risk and possible impact on the organization. All right, if we look at this a method of identifying, sorry, okay, method of identifying. Okay, there are a few methods there. Okay, one method is brainstorming with staff or external stakeholders to identify the potential risks. Eh? Right, and this approach actually can help you to identify potential risks that may not be immediately apparent to the management team. Maybe you are not aware about it. Right, and another method is researching the economic, political, operating environment to identify the potential risks. Then maybe you can conduct the interview with relevant people and also useful uh, with people, or maybe you can conduct the interview with the organization, all right, which is also useful uh, for us to identify the potential risks. Eh? And this can uh, uh, help you to gain uh, better insight from the experts in the industry, all right, and uh, maybe uh, during your Sulam project later, you can include this in your studies, okay, where you can try to identify the potential risks, eh? right, that may not be immediately apparent to the management team, right, so maybe you can use uh, this uh, prospectus risk method, all right, a few methods here, all right. <clears throat> And now we look at this, <coughs> look at this uh, risk, categorization of risk. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so, 
So the first, the first one is strategic risk. Okay, uh, where this type of risk actually arise from long term effects, such as those related to the nature and type of business. Okay, uh, the changes in competitive and legal uh, environment, poor long term decision that you have made. All right. Uh, for example, uh, we can look here. It's a supermarket that did not respond to the growing popularity of online shopping. And eh, we are so uh, into it. Eh? All right. So if uh, the supermarket did not respond, do not try to improve themselves and try to implement uh, the facilities for online shopping. Then uh, this will lead to the long term decline in profit for the company. Right, so in order for them to uh, mitigate this uh, strategic risk, the company must be, uh, I think, close uh, attention to the to their vision, mission, objective, policy. Maybe they can look at the product development, the expansion project, and go uh, maybe the mergers and acquisition as well. Right, and they need to anticipate the changes in the market right and be nimble enough to to adapt to uh, to adapt to the organization all right and so hopefully by doing this they can position themselves for long term success all right so we look at this operational risks which is actually related to the potential risks and the challenges that business face in their day to day operation <coughs> which actually can um, give significant impact to the business overall performance. Eh? So it is uh, essential for the business to be uh, proactive in identifying and mitigating uh, the risk uh, to make sure that the operation will run smoothly and efficiently. All right, so another one is uh, this what we call reporting risk so reporting risk is actually uh, where it is related to the internal and external reporting because you have to make sure that the accuracy and the integrity of the financial information is uh, imperative for the organization to implement uh, effective control and procedures Okay, and this can mitigate the risks associated with the misstatement or manipulation or fraudulent reporting. All right, and another uh, category of risks, we look at this uh, <coughs> compliant risk, which is refer actually to the potential negative impact uh, that may arise from failure to comply with regulatory requirement okay you fail to comply with the industry standard for example okay or maybe uh, you fail to comply with the law okay so this risk in, in may include the financial legal and your reputation as well okay so which can significantly impact the organization ability to operate uh, effectively okay uh, so, of course, when your reputation being punished from in the market, all right, so you will face the difficulty to run your business smoothly, all right. So, non-compliance, actually, non-compliance can lead to the imposition of penalties. They will give impact to your reputation as well as your profit, okay. You might, you might lose or stop from operating, yeah? All right, so this is quite uh, important for the business to comply with all the requirements, all right, by the government or by the Securities Commission, the rules, uh, the labor law, uh, and other specific, for example, other specific uh, regulation. It depends on the nature of the business again, all right? So you have to comply with that. And uh, so this can ensure this, uh, what we call sustainability of the business operation. <clears throat> and type of uh, risk analysis, type of risk. So that we have types of risks of 
Briggs analysis, we have three types of analysis. Okay, the first one is the qualitative. We have also quantitative, and we and another one is the uh, uh, semi-quantitative. Right, qualitative is actually involve the subjective and descriptive approach to evaluate the risk. All right, and this is uh, this method actually uh, useful when you deal with the risks that are difficult to quantify. All right, so therefore we call it qualitative. Okay, it is difficult for you to quantify because uh, there is a limited uh, data available. All right, and if you use the second method, which is semi quantitative, semi quantitative is actually the combination of qualitative and the quantitative approach. Uh, where this method actually assign uh, <coughs> numerical values okay, to some aspect of the risk. Okay, uh, maybe we use probability, all right, or maybe we uh, we use impact. Okay, so you will consider the qualitative factors as well, all right. Uh, so this is considered the semi-quantitative, and the third type here is the quantitative analysis. Okay. Uh, actually only involve the new numerical values and eh? numerical values to various aspects of the risk <clears throat> such as cost duration or probability and this method is actually uh, very useful when there is a large number of data right and uh, the risk factors actually when you have large data okay uh, then you can uh, measure it accurately Right, one large data. Large data means you have a lot of uh, numbers of accidents in record, for example. Okay, so you can calculate the risk there, right? Because uh, when you want to generalize something, you need large data, right? So, in order for you to make a conclusion uh, that uh, a past data is valid or reliable, okay. So, uh, actually, uh, selecting the appropriate uh, method of risk analysis will depend on the specific situation and the available of data again, right? Uh, so, that's why you have to remember that. So, <clears throat> when it comes to uh, analyzing the risk, the most commonly used is qualitative. Okay? We use the qualitative, okay? So, uh, and again, uh, if you want to make a decision on the particular type of analysis, it would be based on the area of risk that you want to analyze, right? So maybe if you want to look at the financial, of course, you will use this quantitative analysis, okay? But uh, if you want to look at the reputation of the company, the brand risk, and then you will use the qualitative analysis would be more suitable, all right? So... And if you look at the risk appetite there, what is the risk appetite? It's actually referred to the amount and the types of risks that organization is willing to accept. If you look at uh, that, we have the uh, what we call low level and high level and the risk to tolerance. Okay, so this is the amount that actually the company willing to, to take. Okay, that is what we call risk appetite. Right. And this is two types of business risks. Okay. <clears throat> so, we have systematic, which is undiversifiable risk. And uh, another one is unsystematic, which is diversifiable risk. Okay. Systematic, where uh, this type of risk involve investment risk that is inherent in the entire market. All right, attributed to the broad market factors where uh, the investment portfolio risk that is not based on the individual is assessment investment. All right, uh, that is systematic. You have learned this, I think, in your corporate finance or financial market. All right, so <coughs> the fact that uh, maybe contribute to this uh, systematic risk, uh, maybe economic recession, war, changes in monetary policies, and natural disasters. All right, that is systematic. And for unsystematic, actually, it refer to the investment uh, that is specific 
to an individual company, all right, to industry, specific industry, or to a single sector only. And then it is actually unique uh, to a particular <coughs> security or asset that can be mitigated uh, through diversification. All right, so that's why we see that unsystematic risk is also called this <coughs> diversifiable risk because it can be reduced or can be eliminated by investing in a diversified portfolio. Okay, if you still remember in your six um month six six one where you have learned about this portfolio management. Okay, so why we have you portfolio? because we want to diversify the risk, eh? All right, we try to eliminate, okay, if we want to have single business and we have many businesses, all right, why we venture into this, what we call uh, these um, related and unrelated businesses, okay, both have pro and cons, okay, that is related to the risk and, and systematic, it's actually, uh, it, uh, it is specific where it's referred to uh, also the market risk eh? yang tadi tu if you look at the unsystematic systematic is more on the <coughs> individual okay so let us look at the a bit on this controllable or uncontrollable the external factors and so on okay so we look at the systematic here systematic risk <coughs> Actually, systematic risks arrive from external factors, as I mentioned earlier, due to the economy, political, or social in nature. All right? It is outside of the investor's control, outside of your control. Okay? And uh, when come to the market, why impact systematic risks actually affect all investment in a particular market or a set class to varying the degrees. Okay, so it means that this uh, diversification, a common strategy for mitigating the investment risks, cannot eliminate this systematic risk. Okay, so the, uh, uh, another example is the political instability, the interest rate changes, eh, which is happened in our country now. All right, uh, so that is actually uncontrollable. Okay, that is systematic risk. All right, so uh, maybe what you can consider in terms of the severity, which is cannot uh, be avoided, but maybe you can manage it, okay? You can uh, look at how you want to expose yourself, okay? Or how you want to uh, reduce this uh, systematic risk. Maybe you can use my asset allocation. It can be used my asset allocation all right so by involve uh, involving in this uh, variety of asset for example eh? all right so maybe you can help the company because um if i'm not mistaken eh, for, uh, stock and bond they tend to have an inverse correlation Kalau you ingat lagi lah, between stock and bond they have inverse correlation meaning that when the stock price fall then the bond price normally will rise so you can have allocating asset uh, across different classes so maybe the investors can potentially uh, reduce the overall uh, uh, volatility of the portfolio here okay so that is uh, <coughs> systematic okay uh, so we look at the unsystematic unsystematic <coughs> Okay. The unsystematic risk here, uh, it can be eliminated through diversification. All right. So we look at this uh, diversifiable. It is a diversifiable. So eliminating by investing variety of asset it can be reduced. Internal factor to a company, uh, maybe uh, this actually uh, related to this uh, specific company, as I mentioned before. Right. So, example, uh, when uh, when it is related to the company, it may be because of the poor management, maybe due to the labor strike, okay, uh, product liability lawsuit, okay, maybe uh, because of the accounting errors, okay, and if it is related to the industry, 
maybe changes in regulation, the technological obsolescence, eh? increase in the competition, uh, that is considered the industry. Okay, okay now uh, we look at a uh, few types of risk in the organization. We have political, legal, regulatory. Economic, environmental risk, financial risk, technological risk, business risk, reputation risk, and international risk and fraud. Okay, and I think uh, before I explain it to you, you already have, I think, ideas about this. Eh? Um, okay, that this is not too difficult. Okay, so let us look at this. The first, uh, this year, political, legal, and regulatory risk okay so <coughs> okay <coughs> this actually are the risks that businesses face because of the regulatory environment okay uh, let me stop the first uh, recording first and then we record it again because the file is too large. 